This tutorial video will teach you how to create a page break in a QuoteWorks print layout. Page breaks are used to manually force a new page to begin in the printed quote, usually after a specific item or group is printed. Before watching this video, we recommend that you watch our basic introduction tutorial video to get an overview on how to work with the layout designer. To get started, we'll create a couple items on this quote. For the first item, I'm going to name it Test 1. This item will appear on the first page of the quote. The second line item is where the page break is going to take place, so we'll simply name this item Page Break. For the next item, I'm going to call it Test 2. Test 2 will appear on the next page after the page break occurs. The next thing that we need to do is edit the print layout. Click on the File Print menu, or just click the Print button on the QuoteWorks toolbar. Now we'll choose the layout that you need to modify, and press the Edit button. When the Layout Designer opens, you'll notice we only have one detail section. To create the page break functionality, we'll need to add a second detail section. Click the Section menu, and then choose New, then choose Detail Section 2, and click OK. Since we won't need all this extra room for Detail Section 2, we can shrink this section as much as possible. Next, we'll create a filter in each detail section. The filters tell the print layout what value to look for so it knows where to place the page break in this layout. Now apply focus to detail section 1. I can do this just by clicking inside the detail section. When you have focus in this section, you'll see two small boxes appear. Focus can be applied in this manner for all sections, however for this tutorial, we only need to apply focus to the section being discussed here. Now right click inside detail section 1, choose the filter menu option so we can add the filter statement. I'm going to create the filter statements and then I'll give you an overview of how they work. The filter statement we're going to use will contain the operator dot if dot. You can add it by clicking on the operator button or just by simply manually typing it in just as it appears here. Then the data field. Select the document items table and then choose the description field. Now click the operator button and choose the not equal to operator. Lastly, add the words page break in quotations. It's very important that you notice the filter statement and the format of the particular selection criteria that we have here. It's also very important that the words or characters that you're using for your page break within the quotation marks in the filter statement exactly match the words or characters listed in the description field on the document items tab. To recap, the filter statement reads, if the description does not equal page break. The field that we're working with is the description field from the document items table. The value that the filter is looking for in the detail section is not equal to. After creating the filter statement, click OK. Now let's do the exact opposite for the detail section 2. So again, make sure detail section 2 has focus, right click, choose filter, and let's create our second filter statement. This filter statement will be exactly the same as the first, except that this statement will have the equal to operator instead of not equal to. After creating the second filter statement, click OK. As you get more comfortable with the filter statements, which we also commonly refer to as filters, you can simply copy the text from the first filter and paste it into the second filter. 
I'm not taking any shortcuts on this tutorial so you can get a better feel for how to build the filters. There's one more criteria that we need to set up for the page break to work properly. Right click in Detail Section 2 and choose Format, or simply double click inside Detail Section 2 to get the Format window to pop up. Select the Advanced page after printing this section checkbox. When you click the Print button, the Layout Designer will look at the description field of every line item in your quote. Each filter will look for the value of page break. If the item description does not have the exact words page break, then the item will be placed into Detail Section 1. If the item description does contain the exact words of page break, then the item will be placed into Detail Section 2 and the page will advance. Note that we aren't putting any data fields into Detail Section 2, so the page break line item, even though it's placed into Detail Section 2, won't actually show up in the quote. We're only interested in the advanced page action that will occur when Detail Section 2 prints. Now click the Save button to save all the changes that we've just made, and then close the Layout Designer to preview the layout, and let's see how the filters are going to work. Choose the layout we just altered and click the Preview button. On page 1, you can see the item that I created called Test 1. In this example, since the page break occurs immediately after the Test 1 line item, you'll notice a lot of blank white space on the first page. After the page break occurs, the next item, in this case Test 2, will appear on the next page. As a helpful tip, once you have your detail section filters created, you can make it more streamlined for your users by creating an F2 lookup value of page break in your description. Simply place your mouse cursor into the description field. Press the F2 key on your keyboard and the F2 lookup window appears. Now add the value of page break, making sure to spell it exactly as you did in your filter statement. Now all the user has to do when he or she wants to create a page break is to place their mouse cursor into the description field and press F2 and select the page break value that you created. An alternate method would be to create a product named page break in your products database that your users can add to the quote.